In this tutorial, I will show you how to work with the Where I Am object forms. When you create a business object, the Where I Am automatically creates a default form for the object. Here, I have a custom object that I have created. Note that a Where I Am has automatically created a form for this object called Main. Let's open this form by double clicking on it to see what it consists of. A form in a Where I Am consists of one or more form sections. I will explain what form sections are later in this tutorial. By default, a where I am creates a single form section for the form, also called main. Let's open this form section by double-clicking on it and see what's in there. The central part of the form section dialog lists all the elements that the form section consists of. Here we can see that our aim automatically added all attributes that we have defined for the business object. Let's now see how this form looks like in the browser. We press the preview button and our aim automatically opens the browser to show how the form looks like to the end user. As you can see, by default all attributes have been placed in a single vertical column and AwareAIM has generated default controls for each of the attributes. The form occupies all available width. This doesn't look very nice and we need to customize this form to make it look better. Let's change the width of the form. We'll make it 850 pixels and also change widths of individual controls on the form so that they line up a little better. To change how attributes are displayed on forms, you need to change presentation options of the attribute. This can be done by clicking the presentation button on the, on the attribute itself. In this case, the new presentation options will apply to all forms by default, unless they are overridden on a particular form, which is what we will be doing here. I will make both first name, last name and address attributes 350 pixels wide. Let's see now how it looks in the browser. This looks a little neater. However, we can see that the labels of some columns do not fit and we need to allocate more space for the labels. We do this by going to the form section and clicking on a little triangle that represents a column on the form. There we can change the width of the label column from default 90 pixels to 110 pixels. This looks better now. I would also like to show you another interesting way of changing width of all controls on the form at once. We can adjust all controls to the right edge of the form and leave a little gap between the controls and the edge. This is called anchoring. To apply anchoring, we go back to the column properties and specify entire column width less 20 pixels. This is how it looks. You can set 20 pixels as a gap between the right edge of the form and the controls. Anchoring can be very useful, but we'll turn it off for this particular form. Let's now change some other presentation options. One of the fields on our form has only two values to choose from, male gender and female gender. By default, AwareAIM generates a combo box for attributes with choices.
Since there are only two choices here, it will be more appropriate to represent these choices as radio buttons. Let's do this. We'll specify two columns and the width of 200 pixels. Let's also specify a little help area for the date of birth control. Let's make it more user-friendly and indicate to the user the format in which the date is displayed. We can do this by adding a description to the presentation of the attribute. This description will either be displayed as a little help icon for the user, or it can be displayed underneath or to the right of the attribute field. We'll display it to the right of the field, since we have lots of space there. So we can see our radio buttons here, and the format of the date displayed to the right of the date of birth control. Looking at our form now, we can see that there is a lot of empty space to the right of the form. Let's move our photo attribute there. It will look better. To do this, we must create a new column for our form section. Now we can drag and drop the photo attribute to the second column. We click on the photo attribute and drag it to the desired position. Note that you can now change properties of each column independently by clicking on the corresponding triangle. For example, we can change labels for all fields in the columns to be displayed above the control rather than to the left of the controls. Let's do it for our second column containing the photo attribute. Let's see how it looks. By default, each column occupies equal space, and you can see that now there is not enough space for the first column. We can fix it by either making the form wider, or by changing the width allocated to each column. We will make the first column wider, and the second one narrower, so that the corresponding width percentages are 1640, rather than the default 1550. When I make the first column 60, the second column automatically becomes 40. Now the form looks good. Not only attributes can be displayed in the cells of the form. You can also add HTML cells, separators, gauges and even Google Maps. I'll show you how to add HTML cells and separators. Let's say we want to add some information to the user. For example, to let him know that fields marked by red stars, which are automatically inserted by a where I am, are mandatory fields. We will add this information at the top of the form with a different background color. To do this, I will, I will insert a new blank row at the top of the form and change its type to HTML. I will then add some HTML code to the cell. This is how it looks now. Note that the information is displayed in the first column only, with an empty label. We can extend this node across the entire form if we hide the label and merge the cells of the row. Here I tick the hide label checkbox. And merge two cells in the row. Now it looks better. Let's see now how to add separators. I have added two attributes to our object username and password that will be used to access the system. By default, a where I am has added them to the end of our form. 
Now I will enclose these attributes into a separate field box called System Access, while all other attributes will be enclosed in the field box called Personal Details. To do this, I insert two separator rows at the top of the form and before the username and password attributes. Let's see how it looks. I will now explain form sections in more detail. If a form has more than one section, a where I am usually puts each section in its own tab. Let's go back to our example with separators. This time we will put username and password attributes in their own tab rather than into the field box. We will delete the attributes and separators from our form section and will rename the form section to personal details. We will now create a new form section called System Access. and insert our two attributes into this new section. Our form now has two tabs, Personal Details and System Access. Note that form sections can also be used to create wizard style forms, where the user navigates between sections by pressing the next and previous buttons. You can easily change the navigation type for form sections by clicking the navigation button. Well, we have only scratched the surface of what can be done with forms and different presentation options available for the attributes. You can do so much more. Display attributes in different colors, add checkbox lists, insert Google Maps, to give you just a few examples. One thing that probably deserves a special mention is how multiple references are shown on forms. For details about multiple references, see the tutorial about relationships. I have added two reference attributes to our object, called Communications and Alerts. Both attributes have multiple allowed checkbox ticked. By default, a variant puts all such attributes into a single cell, which is then displayed as multiple tabs at the bottom of the form so you can see all communications and alerts associated with the customer and navigate to a particular record. Let me show you. Here we can see a form of a particular customer and at the bottom we see two tabs of associated communications and alerts. We can navigate to a form of a particular communication or alert or add new ones. If you don't want these tabs and you want to display these references as individual grids or multi-select drop-downs or swap selects, you need to put each reference attribute in its own cell. So I will remove the alerts attribute from the original cell first then insert it again so that it is displayed and it's in its own cell. I'll show you how it looks. 
So here we can see that the customer form includes a list of communications and list of alerts as separate grids. There must always be at least one form associated with a business object, but you can create more than one, in fact as many as you like. Of all these forms, one should be declared as default for creation and or editing. This form will be used automatically by where I am in certain cases. Other forms can be used in your rules and in operations. There are many more things that you can do with forms. Add operations, change captions, specify refresh and sizing options. You can explore these options on your own and read about them in the user guide.